This is the deer we're mounting today. Another 200 plus inch giant Samson's Mountain Whitetail. Uh, later on, we're gonna be doing a video. We gotta repair this drop tine over here that he broke off, so we'll be doing that later on. It's gonna be kind of matching this one. Another giant whitetail from Samson's Mountain. We'll get started. This is the power stretcher. You put that cape on their head first. And you can stretch these things out, and get a couple more inches out of their necks. That went from a 20 inch cape to a 22. So, that quick. So now we're going to put in the ear liners. I've already pulled the cartilage out, so we're ready to roll. I always like to take these and make sure they're going to fit first before I put any glue on them. So we're ready to Glue it up. I'll take my little scratcher and rough up the surface on these ear liners to get the uh, glue to stick real well, keep things from sliding around quite as much. All right. So I'm just using the uh, the uh, McKenzie's uh, cartilage airliner epoxy, the two-part epoxy. And this is the fleshy pink. This yellow is the hardener. Mix it up really well. So I'm going to add a little bit of the flocking material. And this has dye in it. It's pretty strong. It'll seep through the, the skin of the ear and it'll show the pink. And it'll show a little bit of veins. Which is what we want. This is really good ear adhesive. Once you get it, get your ear liner in place and get your skin in place, it really holds well. It doesn't shrink. It doesn't, your, the skin on the ear doesn't pull away. It's a really good adhesive. You don't have any kind of drumming effect with it. What I like to do is get these ear liners good and slick, smoothed out, get the skin in place before I even start mounting the deer, putting the skin on the form, because this will start drying fairly quick. And this adhesive allows you to put the little ridges and you can actually show veins in the ears with this stuff. If you put enough in there, kind of put a little extra, you can bulk it up and make a vein or a ridge in the ear and, and shape it the way you want it. And it cleans up really well. You can use water to, to clean up with spray water on the if you get some on the hair you can spray water on it I got some on the hair there so what I'm gonna do I got some right there on that hair so what I'm gonna do is just spray that a little bit and just take the corner of my towel and wipe that hair off try and get it out of there 
And what that hole is right there, that's an ear tag hole on this deer. So I'm gonna try and pull this hair out of the way and scrunch this together and seal up that hole. Make it look a little more natural. And then I had a little bit of hair up, or a little bit of epoxy up there on the edge of the ear, so I'll just take wipe that off. And that ear is ready. Good, good and smooth. All the, the edges are right where they need to be. Now we can move on to the next one. All right. Next step is to put on the hide paste. Now I've already, we haven't showed you this, but I've already cut my grooves, sanded them out. Did all the detail work on this one's nose. Cut the grooves in the neck. Got it ready to for the mount. Now I'm just gonna put this hide paste in in these grooves. And I'm gonna put it in a little thicker in the grooves because I really want that to show the detail. I want that glue to hold the hide in there, keep it there. This is another Joe Coombs form also. This is the semi-sneak wall pedestal. You'll notice I didn't put any glue on the back of his neck. That's cause this is where my stitching's gonna be and I don't want any glue to get mixed in the hair there where I'm stitching, so I leave that open. So I'm gonna find that dark line down the back that's the center point i'll run my arms up in there get that on there pull up right over that nose slide it on Pre-fit this hide yesterday just to make sure that it's going to fit this form really well. And it, it was a perfect fit. I matched up this, the shape, everything well for this deer. Hide paste helps this skin slide on easier too. Okay. So this is where it gets a little bit more difficult. We want to show these these grooves in his neck where he's he's turned and we want to show the wrinkles so we've got to get it all in the right place so it takes a little bit of tugging and pulling and keep working at it they'll all fall right in place and at the same time we got to be watching our white patch here on the throat and making sure that it stays centered up stays square on the front of the neck there And I kind of want these wrinkles to be pretty even, all about the same. And I want them to fall right in them grooves that we cut into form, the way that the glue will hold them there. So what I'm going by on these wrinkles is trying to see where this hair is sticking together and making a black line. This is a real pretty cape on this deer. You can see they're all, all the uh, wrinkles, about the same size and the hair lays perfect in there. 
and you can just use your fingers to work that skin down in the, in the grooves there and the wrinkles. And you can usually tell if the, if the skin's not laying right because the hair will want to stand up. Like right in here, it's trying to stand up just a little bit, so I'm going to pull on that some. here. This one's got a real defined white patch. Got a little wrinkle there I need to fix. White patch is pretty much right in the middle of that neck. The edge of it's right on the outside there. sure my brisket is lined up I'm gonna make sure that's centered kind of follow that down and right there's the where the hair comes together coming in from both ways so I want to make sure that's in the center good shape there so I'm gonna pull all this forward and now we're gonna start building the face Let's put the antlers on Forms that come with a little bit of an extra uh, styrofoam brain cavity insert here. You can leave that or take it out. I'm going to leave it on this one because it gives this this uh, skull cap a little bit of support. These are just three in, see these are three inch drywall screws. Uh, you can use three and a half, three inch, it's about the size you want. You can use two inch on the back on, on this skull cap. I just use three inch. When you have antlers this big, you want to use a pretty good size screw. Make sure everything's squared up. Bases are right in line with the bridge of the nose. So we're, we're right where we need to be on that. So now we can start building the skull cap up with the clay. I'm gonna start out with potter's clay. I'm gonna fill in these gaps here and build the where the meat used to be. We gotta replace it with potter's clay. Gotta put that definition back in there where those muscles were, rebuild all that so we can get the detail out of it. These are the pear deer eyes. These are the dark, the pre rotated band. up here and get them level. And the way I usually level them, I'll take the, the dark pupil, dark part of the pupil, because it, it runs this way, it runs horizontal, you know, Put it where it's aiming just above this uh, this corner of the eye. And that usually levels them up pretty good. I want to get them both the exact same. You can also use a, a measuring tool to to make sure that they're level.
right there, right? So I'm gonna pull it back out. I leave the plastic cover on the eyes. That way they don't get all filthy and dirty and the clay and the, and the uh, glue. And then at the very end, I'll take my scalpel and just kind of score that around that, peel that off and they come out nice and clean, they're glossy. I don't have to keep cleaning them. So now I'm going to use critter clay on building the, the eyelids and the eyebrows. It's an oil-based clay. Takes a little longer to set up. Gives me a little more work, working time. shape I go by I try to get that around now I'll just place it on here pinch it off right at the back of the eye press it in and start forming my eyebrow Make sure that that eyebrow is nice and smooth and round. It goes with the same flow the eyeball does. <clears throat> you can kind of control if you want this deer to look like he's really in the rut, you can puff up these eyes because their face really swells up and they're rut hard. So you can always add a little more clay. Just trying to whip it in. Kind of beef up the bottom of that eye. I've seen them where they get, their, their levels are so high that they just swell up their eyes when they're swelled shut. A little more for the eyebrow, beef it up a little bit. But I always want to make sure I'm symmetric. I want to make sure that the other one's going to be the same size, have the same shape. And I'll take what I've got left here, and usually it's about the size of marble, and I'll put right here on top of this tear duct. And I'll use that to help set that tear duct when I push the skin in there. I'll roll it over, and that'll help hold that skin in place. Keep that tear duct from, when it starts drying, it won't pull out. Good thing about this hide paste, it's water-based. You can wash it off anytime. face up there. Basically what I want to do is get everything in place before I start sewing up anything. Make 
sure the skin goes up underneath those antler burrs real, real tight. Get the ears where I'll kind of want them. I'll reposition them after I get him sewed up. Get the eye in place. Got plenty of skin here to work with, which is good. I'm using 20 pound fire line. And all I'm gonna do is pull all this back together where it was cut open. I'm coming from a different direction on that, I think. When I'm sewing these up, I wanna make sure that I'm not getting the hair pinched in between the threads. As I'm running through, I want to keep the hair standing out. I don't want any hair mixed in where I'm sewing. So when I'm putting my needle through, I'm kind of running right on the edge of the skin behind the hair, behind that hairline and right on the edge. And that'll keep me from having to worry about getting hairs mixed in there and trapping them inside to where they won't be standing out and covering the, the sewing that I've done. You see how the, that hair now lays over that. You can't see the stitching now. So that's what we want. And I want to position these ears the way I want them. Sometimes I'll go by what the rack looks like on the deer just to make it Antlers look bigger. Cover up like that. Get these eyes positioned where I want them to get them in place. 